y'all hear me, or they'll probably say, Hey y'all. <laughs> That one looks dark, but I think it's because of your screen. Hey guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi guys. We're excited about tonight's show. Whoa, 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 whoa. Welcome to All Things Black and White with Taylor. And JR. And we have a really fun night for y'all. First of all, we have a couple of announcements to make. Um, this is our last week going live. Last week. Um, <laughs> you know, this is a new show, and um, we we ran into some technical difficulties. And because we didn't want to keep you guys waiting, um, we decided to you know go this route, but next week you will see us solely on YouTube at 8 30 on Tuesday nights. We'll have Tuesday night drops. There we go. And uh you can follow us live at YouTube, all things black, white, Tamar, JR. Uh all things black and white with Tamar and JR. So we're live right now on YouTube. We will be live momentarily on Instagram. So you guys go over this and is follow Instagram, us. Instagram, sweetheart. Instagram, sorry. And we're live right now with YouTube. So letting them both know they can come follow us on YouTube. Okay. Well, what I, I don't know what that word. <laughs> I'm trying to fix that one. Um, what we will say is that in about eight more minutes, we will be um, cutting off the Instagram and going straight to YouTube so you guys can thoroughly enjoy there. Um, and so go on to YouTube right now because you don't want to miss it. It's so yummy and so good. And um, what? In, any announcements? What's the other announcement? We got another one? What's the other announcement? Um, your TikTok video that you did? Is that on? an announcement? Are you going right on in and getting me together? <laughs> Uh, what's the other announcement? Uh, what's the other announcement? I, I, I thought it. that maybe I didn't. I didn't want to miss an announcement. I'm sorry. No, I don't. Okay. I don't think I had another announcement. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead and roll me, baby. Go ahead. <laughs> I know you can't wait. Go ahead. Listen, I got surprised when um, she brought me a plate and she was recording it. Of course, uh, you know she she ate me alive for posting pictures of her that she didn't approve. But of course, my hair was a hot mess when she was like. Here. You was upset about that? <laughs> no, I wasn't upset. I'm just like, okay, you got me back. It's cool. It's all, it's all good. You know, yeah, my hair was like all over. It was it was a hot mess. But anyway, um, so I missed that. I ain't so, find that out until right now. Dang. Tamar did a TikTok, and I know in the past she's talked about how um challenging it's been to cook here in, in, in our house here, and how she didn't necessarily like the quality uh, of the food. And I will tell you that that meal she prepared on TikTok with the catfish and the macaroni and cheese and the yams, um, I loved it. Um, it was great. So thank you, darling, for making me some food. Uh, that was some down south food right there for sure. Was it? Yeah. Okay. For me, it was. I felt like well, it was. Thank you, baby. I appreciate that. <laughs> but the truth is, I didn't mean, you know, to cause a ruckus. Mm. Because what happened was the other day, let me tell you how it all got started. Uh -oh. So the other day, um, Logan and um, our daughter wanted some pasta and they wanted shrimp scampi. Mm. And Logan has been asking me to go live on TikTok. And I was like, I don't know about that, but we could do, we could cook on TikTok. So we cooked the shrimp scampi and everybody had everything to say. JR, I don't, you shouldn't start cooking on really? TikTok. They're going to nail you to the baby. It is what it is. No, baby. They're going to roast you. You're going to be <laughs> them sausages in the oven that Donovan need to take out of. Yeah. <laughs> because everybody was, oh, my God. She making frozen shrimp. Oh, my God. Like, wow. and, yeah, that was going in. Yeah. So that's why I went live. Well, I didn't go live. I started 
cooking for you uh, on TikTok yesterday. Okay. So, so that's you was letting them know that you. I was letting them know. I know what I'm doing. Okay. Okay. Well, I would tell you the shrimp scampi was also amazing as well. So it I don't was. Care nobody. How many bowls of that did you have? Two and a half. <laughs> Probably, yeah, very poor. That's okay, baby. Let them know you like my food. Let them know. Let I them do know. love your food, which is why I'm in that gym on a regular basis. Because it's which is important. Fill you up. Okay, but I do have to say this. Okay. Okay. Um. Everybody know that in my past life, before my Atlanta life, I used to be a gym buff, right, and a diet okay. thing. Okay. 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 And you know, the worst thing I feel like you could do in a relationship is impose your diet. <laughs> on somebody else. Mm. Yeah. Y'all go through that? Do you know about that? You don't know about that. I don't know anything about that. I think I think it's okay for people to eat. You know, it, it'd be great if your partner wants to participate in the diet that you have, but it's okay if one person wants to eat the way yeah, they want to eat. Yeah, but it's an ask. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be, oh, we're not gonna eat because I'm not eating right now. Okay. Does that make sense? I don't think one person gets to dictate whether everybody gets to eat in the house. Okay, so let me just explain to you. <laughs> they actually do, babe. No. Because, you know, especially our household, the way it is structured, which I'm fine with, is like you set the tone. You know what I'm saying? You set the tone for the household. So if... I'm learning, y'all. I'm paying attention. Yeah. No, okay. you don't agree with that? I'm, I don't. Yeah. I oh, think, no. Like, I think when I'm coming home from work or if I come home from a long day. Like, I don't want to have to decide what we make for dinner. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But like, oh, the kids eat in the kitchen. Only they, it's very that's you know fair. structured. Yeah, that's fair. Which I am fine with is what I'm right. saying. Okay. But I'm just saying like, now that you are on this like real hardcore diet, this whole house is on a real right, hardcore diet. Look, look. Let me just. Which is okay. Let but, me keep it real with y'all because I had shrimp scampi the night before. And then last night I had macaroni and cheese and fried fish. Turn the air on, and so up. at 46 years old, for me, I like to keep the carbs to a minimum. I like to keep the protein at, at a high. And then I like to work out. And so you look great, baby. Some, thank you, baby. Thank you. Sometimes when you notice a change in your body, yeah. you're not trying to dictate your diet on everybody else. But maybe they take it that way. And I now I'm listening to understand that maybe you took it that way. But for me, it's more of personal goals. And so while you and I can always work out together, um, I've never done cycling before, but I would try it. Um, I It doesn't mean that I'm not also willing to work out with you. You don't have to do my diet. Um, I just know that I don't want to be a skinny fat guy. And I don't want to be a <laughs> in shape Guy with a belly. <laughs> no, thank you. No, I understand that. Because when you don't, when you don't feel good, like in your body, it's like you can't present your best self, Thanks. which you know you can't show up in the Thanks. relationship. Thanks. Yeah, because I think everybody would say your self confidence yeah. is important, and if you are looking at yourself in the mirror, like man, I didn't look like this a year ago when she first met me. I was looking, you know, a little, little. Nice arm, nice specs, water suits real nicely. And now I'm like, you have to relax. You, you're making people water relax. You well, look fine. I don't know about all that. Okay. But I, you know, I, you, you was I just all want right. to make you sure. He's all that right then. He's all right now. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, so baby, um, let's jump right into the questions. You guys are going to have to go to YouTube if you want to see the rest of That's the right. show. All things black, white. Tamar Jr. Yeah, and if you can't tune in right now, we'll be up later. Right. And Tamar we love Jr. you. We'll see you this time next week, eight thirty on Tuesdays, or come okay. out on YouTube. All right, Instagram. We'll holler at y'all later. All right, YouTube folks. We uh, went through your comments. Yes, we did. <laughs> and actually, part you of the reason that, why yeah. this is the last time we're doing the live is because we agreed. Um, we want to make sure that we're taking time to focus on like genuine answers to questions and topics so that we're not, you know, distracted by bringing people on and all of that stuff and making sure that um, we adequately respond to the questions. Because sometimes, you know, in, in the spur of the moment, we may not have time to think about it and give the full response that we want to give. And so anyway, we did listen to that. And so that's the going to be next week. We will not be live. We will be
posting content based on the questions that you put in the comments. Uh, and even after, after this goes and posts on YouTube, any of the comments that you leave, we'll keep those in mind for questions moving forward. On that note, what, boo? what was one of the first questions, babe, that they that asked us about? Oh, um, what made it easy for us to blend our families? Uh, that, you know, the truth is, I don't even know how to answer that question because I don't even think that it was that was something we sought out to do. Yeah, it I just sort of happens, right? Right. I think if I'm going to answer the question, I think um, blending is less about like, okay, let's see how it's going to work. It's more about meeting each other's family and establishing a relationship before we said, okay, we're going to live together. Mm -hmm. um, and so we already had a familiarity with one another. Um, now, the, the interesting part comes when we're blending where we're living together now. And so now we get to see each other's mannerisms. We get to see how military anal I am in my house and how I fold my underwear and put my socks and all of that in, in my drawers. Um, but I agree with you. I don't think we really had a plan. It was just like, hey, you want to stay the night? OK, cool. Um, and you're not going home. And we introduced that. And then, you know, it, it became pretty easy. And. We listened to feedback. I listened to feedback from Logan, um, made sure he was comfortable. Listen to, I'm sure Tamar listened to feedback from my children. They love that she's in here cooking, because uh, heaven knows um, it's up to Y'all, my I baby was doing cooking. my babies dirty. Listen, my baby was having my babies eating out the microwave. I'm looking for the bus, y'all. I ain't throwing the bus. Oh, no, baby, oh. you was a single man. That's how. I, <laughs> Fair. Well, how what else no, you was that, supposed to no, do? No, that's facts. You're not Benson. And plus, I think the lifestyle that I lived then, where I was constantly working or going to events and pushing the brand, I just didn't have time to cook or probably turned into not wanting to cook. But so I think to answer that question, I don't think um, I don't think we had an issue with blending our families. Um, it just kind of happened organically. If I were gonna, yeah, is that, is that about right? I think so. Um, and like, and let me just give give you full disclaimer. They don't always get along, like real siblings. Big or, facts. You know what I mean? Sometimes <laughs> we be in here breaking stuff up, like yeah, yeah you know, like yeah. it's boundary issues. Yeah, twenty year old, a thirteen year old, a ten year old. Sorry, my son is sixteen as well. But but Jeremy Junior, or as Tamar likes to call him. JR, JR, he's super laid back. He doesn't, yeah, he doesn't have any issues. And I think him and uh, Logan probably get along the best because they're just on the games, playing games constantly. Uh, and so they have fun. But um, anyway, uh, now we get into some of the juicier topics. Um, I think um, this question is posed just in general. Should you keep your exes as friends? Oh, I feel I feel attacked. <laughs> what? Should you keep your exes as friends? Why are you looking at me? You got exes. I, you got more than me. I, I, listen, the question was posed. So, all right, you shooting five, you shooting this shot. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think about that? Why don't you give an honest opinion to, to the good people out there? What do you think about keeping exes as friends? Um, I don't have a problem with it. You know, before I think I started doing work on myself, mm -hmm. I feel like I, I had a huge problem with it because I had insecurity issues that I had to deal with within myself that I probably imposed on other people, my insecurities. Um, but now... They're all, they are all invited to the cookout. Yeah, I, I mean, because the truth is, you know, not all of your exes still want to be with you. You know what I mean? And, you know, you sh I don't think that you should put the friendship on hold because, well, okay, I, 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 I have to tread lightly. No, I have to tread lightly because if I'm respecting you, right, and I love you, that means I want to make you comfortable. Not you as in you, but, you know, the person. Fair. Right? And so if it is um, a problem for you, I think that the least I can do is offer an 
a conversation, an intelligent conversation as to why this is a problem and what do you have a problem with and how how this is my problem. <laughs> Does that make sense? Okay. I think we transitioned to another topic, but No, we did it. We so did it. You're okay with exes being friends. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it. Okay. I mean, we can't because you know, we have extended Extended families, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, well, and I can't. And although, although all of them are not exes, it's like they still were somebody in your life at a, at a certain time, and I have to respect that. that has nothing to do with me. Yeah, I think I think when it comes to children, that's a different thing. No, so, um, no. for me, no, no. I'm sorry, I'm going to ask you a question. Here. Okay, okay. For me, um, if I'm answering a question, I'm being honest. I think my comfort level with an ex now being a friend is very comfortable if I'm introduced and I'm able to have a conversation with that person. Um, I think the respectful thing to do in a relationship where your partners at some point are now just your friends, it's important to make me aware so that I just understand the the audience that we have. And so if I become like best friends with some dude and then all of a sudden he's like, oh yeah, you know, me and Tamar used to kick it. I, I might feel a little taken back. So I don't have a problem with exes being friends as long as I can have a man to man conversation or a man to woman, not knocking that situation so that I can introduce myself and have my and be own. on your territory. Um, yes, that's what you're talking about. Well, I appreciate your honesty on it. I think I think that's fair, but I also I also think a man wants to look at another man in his face and say, I, I respect that you guys where you were and where you now are are as friends. And um, you know, look, I don't know where that relationship is gonna go for you and I, but I want you to know that I'm aware that you guys are just friends and I appreciate um you taking care of my lady, if you guys are out together, if you somewhere, but the thing for me, and I don't know what it is, maybe it's just a, a down South thing. Maybe it's how I was raised. I got to look a man in his eyes, let him know. I understand. But none of that fuck shit is going to happen. In my relationship. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, so I don't have a problem with that, especially if, okay. if, you know, if, if he's receptive and he's cool and he's, you know, warm and welcoming, but if he is standoffish, yeah, yeah, you know, and if he's standoffish or she's standoffish, it's time for somebody to get checked. That part, you know what I'm saying? That and part. that's when you consider not bringing that person into your relationship. That's right. You understand right. what I'm saying? Because then that becomes disrespectful. That's right. And and you know, I think you know, everybody wants to be respected. I think that's the bottom line for everyone. We just want to be respected. Facts. And I, and although I said, yes, I'm okay with it, my personal uh, comfort level is to not have anybody around us that you've had previous dealings with. Really? Because it's just, truthfully, just being honest, um, obviously, aside from children, uh, you know, if, if your son's father- Maybe you can help it. <laughs> aside from- No, why are you- Aside from friends that you have children with that are now friends- I wouldn't want to have any exes around because I just feel like it's a lot of gray area and you just never know what can happen. Of course, I trust my partner. Of course, it's not a question of trust. It's more of a, I don't personally have exes around and I don't maintain friendships because I just think once that door is closed, it's closed. Yeah, well, what's wrong and, with and, being friends? And, I, and I get it. I'm not, I'm not speaking against anyone who maintains their friendships, but in my, if it were up to me, I would prefer that exes weren't friends. That's it. So if I'm answering the question, that that would be my response if, if it were up to me. So um, that's your position on it. I don't know how mature that is. You don't know how mature that is. So you think that that my response comes from a lack of maturity? Um, meaning that you shouldn't be friends with an ex. Okay. You understand know what I'm saying? I don't agree with that because I feel like once you, listen, let me say something. Once you are, a hunt, like I have absolutely no insecurity about any other person. Like 
zip, zero. Can't move me. I'm unshakable, unmovable. Like it's given, it's either you gonna do right by me or you're not gonna do right by me, whether or not the ex is around or not. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I, I just, I don't know. I, I just I, I think, don't feel that way anymore. I agree with you. I don't, my perception is I'm not insecure. I don't have trust issues. I don't have a past uh, situation that, you know, because they were friends and they fooled around as that's why I have baggage. No, it's, it's just more about for me, like, if I can remove any of the gray area personally, I would rather there not be any gray area or any reason to question anything. Okay, I so understand that. that's not um, I appreciate your sentiment on it. And, and you know, it must have taken some um, some deep introspect to get to that oh, point. Man. And maybe I'm not there yet. And I'm willing to accept that. <laughs> that's okay, but if it's up to me. I don't want nobody that's been with my woman around my woman. I just it is what it is. Um, so I just think. It, Mm -hmm. Don't go ahead. No, please. Don't I don't want to open up a can of worms. You listen, listen. It's okay. Only because I don't, I don't want anyone to get the wrong idea. You know, like I, I, we're gonna leave that alone. Okay. So it's fair to say. Okay, that, but you have to say this because if the ex was your friend, that does not mean you still want to be with that person. That still means you still have a friendship with that person. Fair, but maybe that ex. Because sometimes you you have an ex, and they're not supposed to be your ex. Like you, we weren't really supposed to be together, you know. We, like we were better off as friends. You never had that kind of situation before. Um, I know I have. I'm gonna keep it a, a I'm yeah, gonna keep I, it a thousand. I think that's fair, but I think I think uh, where I'm going with the gray area is sometimes people have agendas, and they'll be your friends until you open that door again. And and maybe those friendships, you're solid. Like with. a vulnerable moment. That part. Mm. So for me, it's like why even keep that opportunity available. Because, you know, there's always somebody waiting for you to, they need you to slip up, put your a, head on their shoulder yeah. and cry and comfort you. And, you know, that JR, he's a motherfucker. So, uh, yeah. Oh, girl, come here. Let me give you some love. Yeah. But then that's up to me or up to the person. A thousand percent it is. A thousand percent it is. But, but you can't say that everybody doesn't have a weak moment. I, I agree with that now. So I'm what I'm saying is when you when you remove that element or gray area, then you also remove the temptation. But I a thousand percent agree with you. It ultimately ends and is in your decision making, uh, whether you're going to make that decision or not. So moving on. So is it fair to say then you won't end friendships if your current partner doesn't like your friend? But y'all need a drink. <laughs> getting juicy. Here we go. It's getting juicy. Well, run it out in here. Say it one so, more time. Run, run the question again. Y'all listen up now. Yo, what you if say? I don't like a motherfucker that she Whoa. has with her friends, excuse my friend. She all right. And I say, babe, I don't think this person has your best interests at heart, and I don't like them, and I don't want to be around them. Um, are you ending the friendship? Because I'm never going to tell you to end a friendship. So are you ending the friendship because your partner doesn't like them? And this just doesn't go for me. I I'm just saying, if, if it were in previous relationships, it's just the topic. Um, a segue from the first part of it. Babe, I think that when you're in a relationship with someone, um, you have to respect your own boundary. You know, I think that most people think that when you're in a relationship with somebody, now you hmm. have acquired some type of ownership over that person. And hmm. that's where the lines start to get a little blurred. You I know? could see that. I could see where somebody and controlling might. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even yeah. if you're not controlling, you can come across yeah. or you can have a controlling moment. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I just feel like your responsibility to tell your spouse, I don't that somebody rubs you the wrong way, should be one or two times, but it should not be a constant thing. For sure. Because it makes that other person feel guilty about their own adult individual choices. And the last thing I think that um, a couple should do to each other is take each other's freedom and choices away because things start to get real sketchy then. It becomes unfun the second you feel like you're in a parental relationship with your spouse. 
Yeah, I agree with that. I, I also agree we're also responsible for our own happiness. But isn't it my responsibility to make sure that I keep as much negativity away from you? Is, is that your what? Isn't it my responsibility uh, to keep responsible. as much negativity away from you? Yeah, but especially, it's not your job. It, especially if somebody rubs you the wrong way. It's not your job. Well, it's, it's not your job. It's part of my job to keep peace in our in our relationship. Yeah, but right? the peace could the peace is not with the other person. That's your shit that you bring in. That ain't got nothing to do with that person. That person having fun with their friend. Okay. That you don't like. Okay. And you the one, you know, who is who feathers are ruffled. Because you have these feelings. That person don't have them feelings. Okay. Potentially. Potentially they don't have those feelings. Or or is it... So, yeah, maybe they don't feel the same way that I feel or your partner feels. But do you want to continue to put your partner in that environment and make yeah. your partner feel uncomfortable? Well, pick me, pick yeah, go ahead. At that point, the partner should shut the fuck up. Because you're not nobody, daddy or mama. Oh. You know what I'm saying? And you have said your piece. Okay. okay. I get you don't like that person. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But until a person feels that way for themselves, should a transition be made? It shouldn't be because your spouse don't like nobody. Mm. Mm. No? So you're going to change your life. Interesting. Because the person that you with don't like somebody. Um, I, I know think y'all lying. No, I think the point you're missing, my love. That's going to end real fast. The point you're missing is it's okay for me not to like somebody and it's okay for you to like somebody. But if I don't like somebody or you don't like somebody, then we shouldn't put each other in uncomfortable situations. Even if it's our own shit, we shouldn't put each other in uncomfortable situations. That doesn't mean... Like for me, if I'm saying from my standpoint, that's not saying that I don't think you should still be friends with that person. It's just me saying, okay, um, we are protecting each other's peace to a certain extent. And so you exposing me or me exposing you to a partner. If I had somebody around me that you just couldn't stand that bitch. That don't have them around me. That part. Yeah. So why is that any different for me? Yeah. Why is that? Because that's my shit. Yeah. <laughs> Now y'all see, now y'all see, right? Oh, now for see. the record, everyone is sitting here agreeing with you. I just want to remind everybody, this is a lawyer. I, he's a damn good I, one too. I'm just, so he's really good it's, at, he's, he's really good at, you know, making his case, all right? So if you get hit by a truck or a car, you get your ass locked up and you need somebody to fight <laughs> for you. <laughs> Cause he just sat up here and convinced y'all that y'all, y'all, your best friend, that your boyfriend don't like. Got every right to tell you, you should not hang out with your best friend. That's what that no, man no, no, did. That. No, and y'all say, it. hey, yeah, no, yeah, 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 and, and that's oh, but that makes it uncomfortable too. So let's just say this. Yeah. Let's just say the friend or everybody's out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that person is uncomfortable. Okay. Now that person can't be free and have a ball and have a blast. Now you're making that person choose between them and you. So now you're being selfish because you want to be happy while your partner. But why unhappy. can't they? Why, why would you be unhappy about a relationship that don't belong to you? But why would you not want your partner to be just as happy as you are? Yeah, but they ain't got nothing to do with you. Their relationship is their relationship. No? You got to say? No, no I'm no, no. a real question. No, you, you brought up a scenario where if we're out and about and we see somebody you don't like mm -hmm. and that bitch is all in your face wanting to be your friend... <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. We're about uh, oh, we're not talking, but it's the same situation because that person is friends with your friend and you don't like that person. Okay, see, I'm not gonna go there because I, she I knows lost. what I'm saying. No, I don't. So if we're out and about, okay, 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 hold on, no, hold on, let me send my mind. Let me send them. Okay, now, okay, we out and about. So we out and about, we out and about, and what you posed is we happen to run into the person that I'm uncomfortable with. 
And then I just reversed it and said, you and I are out and about, and we run into a person that you're uncomfortable with. Okay. Right? You felt that when, I'm, I'm when, when you said, no, you felt that a minute ago when I said that you're uncomfortable with. So it's the same situation. My question is, why is it okay for your partner to be uncomfortable while you're enjoying yourself? That sounds a bit selfish. It comes off a bit selfish because you're pointing the finger to say, I'm selfish because I got a problem. And then you're not wanting, you're okay with me being uncomfortable. So now you're being selfish and now we're at odds as opposed to supporting one another. Right? I still disagree. I still feel it still came out the same way. Okay. But, but is it clear to say that if your friend, if I have a woman around that you just absolutely can't stand and we go somewhere and she's there, are you going to want to be there? I would want to be with you. But are you going to want to be there? Yeah, because I want to be with you. <laughs> no. It's cap. No, it's not it's cap. cap. It's cap. My choice cap. is always going to. Uh huh. My choice is always going to be you, which means my choice is always going to be us. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. And so if you're out and about, I don't want to be at home. I want to be out and about with you because, you know, consequently, we're not just in a relationship. We're also best friends, right? That's not, fair. not me and you, but I'm saying in the relationship. So that that would make me feel like I want to hang out with you. I want to be with you. And I understand that you want to hang out with these people that I don't necessarily like. So I'm not going to make that time for you frustrating and stressful because I choose you. Yeah, but the truth is I'm going to feel uncomfortable the whole time because I know you don't like that person. And that's the point. I'm making. Yeah, but I'm not going to I'm not going to give you that energy while we're there. And when we get in this car, it's giving very much. I can't stand that book too. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's going to give you that. Right. Or right. if, but you know what? In the relationships, I feel like you got to choose your fate. You got to choose whether or not you want to have a happy ending or not. You right. got to choose whether or not you are going to let this person ruin the amazing night that you had. I was looking at spouse. the next topic, so but okay. she, she took it away. From no, I, I think that we have to be responsible in the choices that we make when we feel strongly about something. When we feel strongly about a person being with your spouse or your girlfriend, or boyfriend, you you can't make it hell for them because then you bring in hell into your household. That's just how I feel. I don't know. We can move on. No, I think. And I'm not lying. I'm not lying because it's so funny because people don't think I'm a peaceful person. <laughs> people don't know that I choose peace a lot. You know. Um, the truth is, I. I I, I hear what she's saying, and it sounds all perfect and all, but the truth is when, when you're out and about, if you're uncomfortable, you just don't want to be there. And I, as your partner, if I know you're uncomfortable because somebody else is there, mm -hmm. then I wouldn't want to be there either because I know if, my, if I know my partner's uncomfortable, I just I, we're going to remove ourselves from the situation. And one person in our life isn't that important to me to jeopardize my marriage, my relationship? And so if I need to put that person on ice, then that's what I would do in order to be happy in our relationship. But like it's you said, choosing. Sorry. We, we can it's, it's, it's still what? It's choosing. It's choosing? Okay. It's choosing. It's, it's choosing. It's choosing what? No, explain that. Like you're choosing somebody's friend, like, like you you're the daddy and you and I'm the child and I gotta go home. I'm gonna call them my daddy, they're my daddy. Like you're the daddy, but you're not the daddy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I we want to hear what y'all got to say about this. At the oh, end of I this, we're gonna take questions. Going, comments are going we're gonna take y'all questions. Now. Let yourself be seen and know because Donovan is gonna be reading off the questions at the end, or we can even take a few now because I feel like Jr. and I can't move on from this subject because we kind of feel strongly about it. <laughs> we kind of feel strongly about it. Um. Yeah, I, I agree. I saw one of the comments. I can't be fake around people I don't care for. I can't be fake around people I'm uncomfortable with. It's just not me. And I'd rather remove myself from the situation and let my partner have fun because that's her friend. And yeah, but, but, you're not there for them. You're there for but but why put me through torture if if in my in my head I just want to knock this motherfucker out? <laughs> you gotta relax. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I mean. 
if, yeah. if the, the truth is, I, I just, I'd rather remove myself from the situation, say, babe, have a good time, or hey, can we have fun doing something else um, where we don't need to be around choose. them? It's not, it's not making you choose. It's, it's you choosing not to have, have fun with both people because you know you can't have with both, fun with both people together. Okay. But I don't know. I, I respect how she feels and we navigate through life. Life isn't easy. We don't always have the right answer. And I also respect what she said earlier. And that is, I don't have ownership over Tamar and I don't want to have ownership oh, over you yeah. at all. I, I don't also want to sugarcoat how I feel About in any things. situation yeah, because yeah. I think it's important to be transparent. Okay. Um, and so where relationships are truly successful is where people find a compromise and they support each other. And so... Um, in some moments, I've had to sit in a space where I wasn't comfortable, and um, and Tamar knows that immediately, and we navigate through that. Yeah, but he, he no, you're a Leo. We don't navigate through nothing. We oh no, we do initially. Jr. is a Leo, and he can't help himself, as y'all can see. <laughs> when he feels a way about something, it's giving very much. Oh, I got to skate, and that's this is a trait of Leos. Which is fine, you know what I'm saying. I'm a Pisces. I can, you know, play all day. With and you. I got, and I'll be honest. I got to do better at respecting the fact that she feels like it comes off as ownership, and and I, in an attempt to not be selfish and be selfless, I'm in my mind thinking, what is the compromise? What can I do to make sure she's enjoying herself? So if it's an event, if it's an event, if it's something where um, we're required to be there, then of course I'm going to try to get through it. I've I, I've learned sometimes, especially in the in the career and industry that she's involved in, sometimes you got to smile, shake hands and and just accept it for what it is. But the reality is, in my mind, I'm sizing somebody up like you ain't going to bust a great. You're a whole lawyer. <laughs> I'm also <laughs> a Marine from New Orleans. OK, from the all right, Project, let's move and, on. And these hands are good. But OK. I, anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was the next question? Oh, no, this guy got you thugging. No, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm just being real. I, I'm sorry, guys, if my authenticity. No, I'm kidding. Is, I'm kidding. Okay. No, you're always professional and, and sweet and kind. For sure. So, sure. and that's what I love about you, um, because you don't make it uncomfortable for me, even when you are uncomfortable. And I appreciate that. Thank you, baby. Okay, so this is another question that we had. Uh oh. Jr. And you and I, when we were on Queen's Court, talked about this. Uh oh. How soon is too soon to talk about finances? And uh. do you tell the truth? <laughs> 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 All right, this for you. This for you. This for you. This for me. Yeah, it's for you. Oh, you answered the first. You answered the first last time. So, how soon is too soon to talk about finances. Well, I think obviously when you're courting or you're dating, it might be too soon. I think you can get an idea from the way the man courts you, whether you're having to pay the tab or he's paying the old tab or he's wanting to split, or maybe even sometimes splitting is not a sign of he doesn't have money, but maybe it's a sign of he wants to save money. It's a sign of you're blocked. Okay. You heard that, right? Okay. I've never let Tamar pay for a date, especially when we were initially courting. I wouldn't allow her. She would fight for the bill and I would fight. I would make sure that I took care of it. But when is too soon? I think too soon is before you have gotten into a serious relationship. I think to, the way to answer it is to say, when is soon enough? And my comfortability with discussing finances and is when we're talking about engagement or marriage and planning our future together. And then that's the right time to have the conversation. Um, if it comes up prematurely, of course, you know, you, you can, you can disclose, but maybe you don't necessarily say, yo, this is how much money I got in my bank account. I got $750 in this bank account. I got $250 in my cash app. I don't think you go there. You know, no, where you, where you go? I think I think you know you a comfortable question might be early on, you know. Well, what's your career? Okay, you know, in, in your career, what does that look like? Or you know, um, 
it's okay, I think, when you're serious enough and you're in a um, committed relationship to know how much your partner makes. I think that's fair. Or what that range looks like. Um, I, I don't know that you necessarily talk about how much money you got in the bank and all of that. I, I think that what conversation comes up. That conversation comes up later. You don't really talk about finances. You, oh, I disagree. You, you could talk about opening a joint account. Oh, no, 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 no. Because if you don't talk about finances, we ain't talking about joining nothing. We ain't talking about joining hands. We ain't talking about joining a bank account. We ain't talking about joining, joining. We ain't talking about none of that joining. Because I'm going to tell you why. Because for me, it's important for me to be equally yoked with somebody. I don't want to get so far down the road with somebody and we're not compatible. Mm -hmm. We have to be compatible. Mm -hmm. Right? You, okay. don't, you don't agree? That's fair. But you knew going into the show, when we had this conversation on the show, that you might be dating somebody who didn't make as much as you. Oh, now nah, I said the duck. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself. Okay. Well, that was one of the questions. One of the questions was, are you comfortable with dating someone or being with someone who potentially might and make on, less And the only reason why, and I'm not down to anybody, yeah. you know what I mean? Because you can find love with the garbage man or fair. a plumber, what, whatever, fair. whatever. You can, you can find love anywhere with anyone, That's right? Fair. That's fair. But you also don't want to set yourself up for something you don't want to be in, mm -hmm. you know? You don't want to find yourself in a situation where... You are carrying everything because that shit gets mm. heavy one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you have to make yeah. sure that you are signing yourself up for what you are into. Yeah. Don't volunteer me into nothing. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like if you don't have the financial conversations in the beginning, then you don't know. And, and then you look ridiculous. Oh, I'm in love with you, but you ain't got your shit together. So I got to go. Now I'm wasting my time, wasting your time. You mad at me because I can't do this. So how does Tamar approach that conversation in a in a dating uh, situation? Or how when did, does that conversation How go? did I? I don't know. This is for them. For them <laughs> oh. no, this, is for, this is for you to answer for um, them. How do you approach that conversation? Um, so where are we financially? Okay. Are, are you in a just comfortable place financially? Randomly just... Oh, no more than the third date. Okay. You don't let that third date pass without... <laughs> we had a conversation and I think, I think we were very transparent about um, what we could potentially make, what we make, how comfortable we are, you know, what our um, debt looked like um, and what our goals were, our future path yeah. looked like. And I think we we're pretty transparent about that. But I, I What's think the credit score, score? So I said credit score. We talked about the credit score. Credit don't matter if you got cash. Don't go tell <laughs> if you have liquidity, liquidity is king. But if you have credit, credit is better than liquidity. I, but we'll go there. We can teach a credit class another day. How much more time? <laughs> it's so silly. <laughs> so I, I, I think um, it depends on your comfortability. It depends on your dating style. If you're dating mm -hmm. for marriage, if you're dating for something serious, Security, yeah. then maybe you have that early on. Um, I know just being single as a single man when I was dating, if it came up too early, kind of like, whoa, easy killer. Like, really? Why are we talking and then, about like, the one that was like a gold digger? Yeah, yeah. It comes off as, as very like, um, well, what does she do? It depends on what she did, though. True, true. I mean, if if, if, if she, she was a jump off of a, you know, a nice little side piece, a, a leg of the thigh, you know what I'm saying? Then, yes. But if you, you know what I'm saying, you, a leg, oh man, a leg in the back. <laughs> What's that mean? <laughs> you know, a little snack pack. <laughs> okay. But if you a whole value meal, right, right, it shouldn't be a, a problem. You should expect it. Well, no? I, I think no, because I think um, you know, men, uh, at least men who are accomplished, men who at least have things going well for them, that have built a foundation. I don't know. Men's never been offended because I've asked them that. I don't think you ask them like that, but I think it just comes up in casual conversation and you talk about it. But if it's a direct question from someone that I have had one date or two dates with, I'm going to be like, check, please. Yeah, because, you know, my now my question is, well, why? Why are you counting my coin? Is that it or is that? Wow. Because I. For me, especially like you and I met in different circumstances, right? We, we met under knowing that um, 
we were looking for potential love. If I'm just if I'm just dating somebody, I don't know by date three if oh, I want to disclose so my entire you know financial. You know by date three if they are leg or thigh. Well, I know if you I want to. You know, date three, it is already. I know if I want to bear. I know from date number one if I want to be or I want to marry him. I, I know that. That's fact. Thank you. Everybody understands that. But I don't know if I'm comfortable enough by date three. Now, like if we didn't stayed up for the first two dates and we didn't talk for several hours at a time to the wee hours about. of the morning. He's or, not talking about me. You know, then then I or if we've talked like if prior to date three has been weeks and we've talked every day and I've built a comfort level, then yeah. But I think day three is a red flag. But what do y'all think? I, I'm you know, I, I'm not sure. I think a man is only uncomfortable. If he ain't got it. Or. And that's why he don't want to say nothing. Okay, but that's but an established man is given. I got it. But you don't think men who like are quick to disclose how much money they have are a turn off? No, I don't. Actually. It's the exact opposite. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good thing we're approaching a year because I, I completely understand it. And, yeah, but I got my own shit though, and yeah. always have. Since that's fair. I was about and that's fair. Years and you old. expect whoever's coming to the table that. So my, mine's a little too. bit different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And not just because of the level of success mm -hmm. that I have acquired on my own. It's the level of success that I have experienced in my lifetime. Right. Does that make sense? That's like fair. none of that shit really impresses me. That's fair. That's fair. Like, I think it just doesn't. I think it tells you whether you can take things to another level with someone um, or you're immediately categorizing whether they're going to be the whole thing or. I just feel like it, um, we can't take things to another level if if that's an issue. OK. Does that make sense? That's fair. That's fair. I think it is in the context. If you're uncomfortable of with it and I don't know about it, then it's an issue. <laughs> OK. No, that doesn't I, I, I appreciate yeah. what you're saying. I don't completely agree with it. I think it, there can be red flags and then I think it could be too soon. It could it could ruin the organic chemistry of the dating. Um, you you're gonna do your own homework on and knowing there are certain indicators that are gonna tell you maybe he's flashy, maybe he doesn't really have it, but there are certain things that are indicators that should let you know he's comfortable. If you have to ask, then that means you're unsure and maybe maybe that conversation is not going to come off the right way, but I appreciate your honesty. You at least got to ask. Okay. You got to know okay. where you're going. Okay. So yeah. I don't know where the time be going. It's flying by. It's I mean, you got by. like 12 minutes left. Yeah. Right? But I, I definitely want to get into your questions because it's important for us. We really appreciate you all watching. So um, Jonathan, you can get some questions going. Cause you know, Jay, I got them All right. Okay, guys. Eyes. What questions do we have? I, I'm, I can read from here. It's okay. <laughs> what questions we got, y'all? Because you know, I, I, I see all the responses. I, I Everybody's love. like, "Yes, date three. I'm sorry, y'all. We gotta know. We gotta know. <sighs> Suppose you have a baby by somebody you don't know, and you don't know where they at financially. Then now what? That's fair. That's fair. But you don't let them hit and smash. But why would you the have a child with somebody what? that you're Sometimes not married? Sometimes they don't hurt. Oh. I'm sorry, what? You better find that dot me again, though. <laughs> what were the questions? What did you ask that? What were the that? questions? <laughs> How do we feel about a prenup? Oh, oh, we had that conversation. We did. We did. Um, I think it's based on relationship by base, like whatever the relationship is. Does that make sense? It's, it's it's not oh i'm automatically having a prenup i think has to do with the relationship okay okay does that make sense so your answer to whether we should have a prenup is based on your comfortability in the relationship and how much you potentially trust your partner yeah okay um i've never been one to care about a prenup because i believe as a leader protector and provider in the event that the vow that i give before god for whatever reason I prayed on and God has given me the clarity to end the, the marriage, then I feel an obligation to take care of 
my spouse and I don't really care about splitting it down the middle. I can lose it all and I'm going to get it all back. Hello, that's times. how I feel, JR. So I, I don't, feel the exact same way. I don't way. care about the prenups. I really don't care. Um, I've started over so many times in my life. It's yeah, like, whatever, dog, God got yeah. me. I'm, you know I'm not. Um, so the question I saw was. Um, and listen to somebody. Some of that shit need to go with that person. Some mm. of that stuff you holding on to mm. is stifling your growth. Mm. It's stifling where you, you know, God has for you. You know what I'm saying? That, let that person take go. Don't take that stuff. Stuff. Okay, go ahead. It's stuff. I agree. It's meaningless. It's stuff. It's, stuff. it's material, and the truth is... Even money, it's stuff. It becomes controlling and about power as opposed to moving on from the marriage and, and both being able to find happiness. So I saw the first question was, um, when did we individually fall in love? <laughs> I don't know that we can... <laughs> Um, I'll answer. Um, I fell in love. Of course, you didn't get to see all of all of the taping. Um, of course, there was so much um, time spent together in such a little bit of uh, of film that they showed on the show. And so, for me, I think I fell in love when you showed me grace when I was able to be open and honest about embarrassing moments and um, how difficult it was for me to even be in the situations that I was in and um, just thinking about not having a father and, and you just, you held my hand and you said, it's okay. Um, you don't have to bear that burden, you know, and when, you gave me that peace and you became a, a safe space. That's when I fell in love. And so it probably was within, if I'm being honest, within a couple of weeks. Um, and I mean, this one here, <laughs> we talked about everything under the sun and I wish you guys could see most of it, but um, that's when I fell in love with her. Um, and I'm reminded by that every day because um, she loves me. She loves my children and um, she gives me a hard time, <laughs> but I love that she just accepts me for who I am. Oh, that's nice. I don't give you a hard time. I don't tell the people who got that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let y'all decide that one. I don't know what that means. So when did you fall in love? Um, uh, okay, y'all remember that time? When um, they, we were at Sovereign Suites and we were still shooting this show and we ran into each other. We did. And we just had an organic conversation. It was just, yeah. you know, a good conversation. And we talked about a lot of stuff. Yeah. And um, yeah, I feel like, um, I think I fell in love then. Yeah, it was a nice guy. And you were different from, you know, the scallywags and clowns out here in Atlanta streets. <laughs> you kind of set yourself apart. I set myself apart. <laughs> from the foolishness. Okay. And, you know, we became real friends. We did. You know, and, and you know, so, again, it was a safe place for me to be yeah. open and honest about yeah. everything, even uncomfortable things, you know, and I appreciated that about you, that, you know, it was no judgments. Any other questions? He wants to tongue me down. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> He's a lawyer, Tamar. Get the prenup. Okay. <laughs> Where's he going? Right. Where am I going? <laughs> Nowhere. Okay, now that Nowhere. wasn't for us. That facts, was facts, a, facts. a general question. Okay, what questions you got? Come on, fire away, fire away. I saw earlier it said, um, did they ask the men what their salary was. Did they check their salary or their wages and all that? No, that wasn't a pre-screen for the men. It should have been. <laughs> Woo! Because some of them was on their way. Absolutely some no of jobs. them weren't earning anything. They were relying on their parents. They were able to pick that out real quick. Yeah. What you got? What you got for us, Donovan? What other questions did you see? We got Because we got to wrap this up. We got to go. But I want to say I appreciate... Every one of y'all being on here and commenting, this is organic for us and you're getting to see, this isn't 
pre-recorded. So we're not giving you something scripted. We're giving you um, raw. And that's what our relationship really is like, honestly. Okay, question. What's the most challenging thus far in the relationship? What's the most challenging thus far in the relationship? Mm. Why are y'all asking us questions about us? We're offering advice to y'all, but I'm going to answer this. Okay. Um, the, what's the most challenging? Um, JR is a lawyer. He's not in entertainment mm. at all. And what's challenging is when people tries to make it like that is something he's interested in or all he's interested in. Does that make sense? It's challenging because I know who he is. Um, I, I know what he wants to be. I know what he's interested in. And when people publicly put out false narratives mm. as to, you know, why he is here or what he wants, it's frustrating. Yeah. It's frustrating. Um, I'd love to answer that too. Cause listen, I don't give a shit about all the lights. <laughs> there you go. I told her that on the show. Um, I, I worked my ass off to provide a foundation for myself. And so all of the lights and all of the fame and all of that, I don't care about it. I'm just JR at the end of the day. I work my ass off every day to provide for my family. I'm blessed to have this woman on my side. And, uh, you know, all those fake narratives, I don't give a shit about because they ain't walked one day in my footsteps. They didn't have a hair. Here he go, here he go, here he go, here he go. All, all right, the stuff all right, through. next question, next caller. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I'm sorry. It does get you a little triggered, though. Get you triggered a little bit when people think that. What else we got, Donovan? What's your favorite thing to do that together? No, we're not asking yeah, questions we, about we, it. Ask, um, all right, so I guess that wraps this up because y'all ain't got no relationship questions for y'all. Uh, we love y'all. We will see y'all again next week. We have something amazing that you'll be watching on next Tuesday. That's right. So please like and subscribe so you will not miss an episode or any of the amazing treats that we have for you. We make it on here and cook for you. I don't know. You never know what you might see. So we love you. And of course, you got to know if you get hit by a truck or car. Call JR. Yeah. I'll let us. Thank y'all so much. Yeah, Look forward to talking to y'all next week. Call my baby. <laughs> Bye. Bye. See you next week. Bye.